Great Smokies, among the cool mountain air and the rich colors of fall, lies a rivalry that stirs deep in the souls of these Tennesseans. Today, Commodore Gold will remain silent until the string has been broken. And orange blood will run hot. From the foothills of the Smokies, Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, sit tight for a great intrastate rivalry, Vanderbilt at Tennessee. Jefferson Pilot is brought to you by Lee Apparel. With regular relaxed and loose fit jeans, Lee is the brand that fits. By the Lincoln Mercury dealers in the Southeast, who invite you to take a good look at Mercury Sable. By Lowe's Home Improvement Center, helping to add value to your home. And by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. Welcome to our Lee Apparel SCC Game of the Week from a cold and wet Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. It's the intrastate battle of Tennessee, the Vols and the Commodores. I'm Bob Carpenter, and welcome to our season finale. 13 weeks it's been, and here we are at the end of the regular season. And of course, it has been Tennessee very hot lately, blowing out its last three opponents. As far as the Volunteers are concerned, though, even though they have dominated this series, winning 10 in a row, they have also won 16 of the last 17. Philip Fulmer does not expect this to be an easy one here today. It's always a tough football game because Vanderbilt plays very emotional against us. And, and when we play emotionally well against them, we, we play extremely well. We've, uh, have dominated the series in, in recent history, but it certainly hasn't been easy. And it's our pleasure to have Jack Corgan with us today. Nice having you. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate it. All right. And Vanderbilt, of course, a football team that likes to keep the ball on the ground, running out clock, but they're very good against the run defensively. They are number eight in the country against the run, and they're going to try and use that to some effectiveness today. They're also going to try and put pressure on quarterback Heath Shuler, and they're going to do that. Those two had no sacks at Florida last week. Now, what about Heath Shuler? Is this his last game ever at Tennessee? Well, I think that is the big question in Knoxville, whether or not Heath Shuler will be back. I don't even think Heath knows right now. But one of the things he has going for him, besides his talents, the talent of tailback Charlie Garner, the conference player of the week last week with 186 yards rushing against Kentucky. And if we're going to put him in the meat category, he's got to be ground filet, not ground <laughs> chuck. U.S. prime, no doubt. What about the Commodores and the Volunteers? They don't like each other a whole lot. And Bob Kessling comes on in a moment to tell us about this Vanderbilt silence. Well, about three hours ago this morning, it was 48 degrees in Knoxville. The temperature is plummeting. It is now 40 degrees. It's going to be slick. This is an artificial surface that will not be here next year. But a guy who's been here for many years is Philip Fulmer and Bob Kessling. He's been a part of this program for a long, long time. Yeah, and Bob also knows a lot about this rivalry. He grew up in Middle Tennessee, played his football in Tennessee. He was at Vanderbilt for one year as an assistant coach, 13 years here as an assistant coach, and now the head coach of the Tennessee Volunteers. He would not like to lose to Vanderbilt today to end this season. Part of the tradition at Tennessee is on the final day of practice during the regular season, it's right before the Vanderbilt game, and today was on Thanksgiving. The Volunteers had a chance to take a shot at a tackling dummy dressed up in a Vanderbilt uniform. All the seniors, all 16 of them were introduced, and they all got a shot and would love to end with a victory over Vanderbilt today. Now, you talk about Jerry Denardo. He's never beaten Tennessee. In fact, he won't even mention the name Tennessee. He wants to intensify the rivalry, and, of course, he wants to beat them. And he says right now he just calls Tennessee that school to the east. And today he's out to beat them. And we've heard reports as well that he will not utter the word orange either. Wonder what kind of juice they might have had this morning. Fierce rivalry on a fiercely tough day. Things that you talked about before that will be of concern, Bob. This is an old carpet going to be taken up after the game. And when you have an old carpet and the rain we've had, the conditions are very slick. And the footing will be something we really have to watch. This is a series that goes all the way back to 1892. Today will be the 87th time these teams have met. And Tennessee has dominated that in recent years, but Vanderbilt has a way of playing Tennessee tough and then not being able to get it done in the second half. 
Now, this field also has a bit of a crown on it. And Jack, uh, who gets the advantage in conditions like this? Uh, to be honest with you, the offenses do. I don't think it's an advantage to one offense more than another for uh, Jerry DiNardo's Vanderbilt team with the option attack. They're going to have an edge because they know where they're going. And the, where his pattern is, the defensive back has to react to it. Tennessee 8-1-1, eight, one, and one, the only loss at Florida, the tie at Alabama. A bunch of outstanding seniors who've had great success here will be saying goodbye after today's game. So they've won basically three out of every four times they have played. Tennessee, of course, eliminated from the chase for the SEC Eastern Division Championship they needed this year. That was back on November 6th when they upset Kentucky 12-7. Tennessee won the toss and will defer, so Vanderbilt will have the football. And the first series will be very important for the Commodores. They need a couple of first downs. Can't fall behind like they did at Florida last week. There's the junior from Chattanooga, John Bexford, to handle the kicking duties for the Vols. It's football time in Tennessee, they announce, and Bexford is ready. Jackson will take it about three yards deep, and that'll be it. Ronnie Gordon, the red shirt. First down efficiency for Vanderbilt. That's crucial to their hopes for an upset. This is a football team that cannot play third and long. The pitch to Jackson. Volunteers stepped it up well. And nothing much going on on the near side. Here's a look at the Mazda starting lineup for the... After the loss of one on first down, they'll get about three or four on that side. Reggie Ingram in on the stop there and up front. Third down and seven. Only 31% the Commodores this year. Simon with a straight drop. He's going to go up the middle. Good defense there by Reggie Ingram and the pass is incomplete. Jason Tomacek, the tight end, the intended receiver. Flags on the play and some rough stuff after a couple of hits. I think they're going to call Reggie Ingram for, for unsportsmanlike conduct. The ball was dropped by Tomacek. And ball's clearly gone. And now Ingram's still working on Tomacek and throws him to the turf. And the official said that was unnecessary, and that's a bad penalty for Tennessee. Ball was incomplete, but it didn't look that way. He was playing it right through the whistle, and they'll step off a big one against the Volunteers. All the way out. The crowd will get into it. Stadium not quite full today on a dreary Knoxville afternoon. Plenty of orange surrounding us. Tony Jackson with the deep gear. Ball comes loose, and I believe it has been whistled dead. It'll give this crowd another reason to boo. They've not been happy with the decisions that have gone against them so far, but what a play by Ingram's replacement, John Emery, who came flying through to make a good stop on Jackson. Watch number 46 from the left side of your screen. Again, sliding underneath against the option attack, whether it's out of the bone formation or the eye formation, the middle linebacker's got to be able to scrape to the football. Second down and 10. Play action to the deep man, Jackson. Gordon up the middle. That one pulled down by Kenny Simon across the midfield stripe. Now he's trying to play a new spot. That was a 12-yard gain. iPhone stacked behind Gordon. Jackson kicks the ball right to the Volunteers. And it's Deron Jenkins with the pickup. Those were the turnovers that absolutely killed Vanderbilt a week ago against Florida. In tennis, they would call that an unforced error. I mean, that's a pitch right into the hands of Tony Jackson, and then he compounds the error by drop kicking it right to Deron Jenkins. And they Jenkins had, with his fourth fumble recovery of the year. Excuse me, they had eight turnovers last week against Florida, and six of the eight were turnovers just like that. Not really forced by the defense, just miscues by the offense. Great field position for Heath Schuler and the Volunteers at the Vanderbilt 43-yard line. 
go back. Outside to the right side, and running hard with it there is Billy Williams inside the 25. He is such a threat. Once he catches the passes of Heath Schuler, a 19-yard gain there for the junior out of North Carolina. Schuler, of course, has already set the single-season touchdown pass record here. He surpassed Dewey Warren's by six, and he's within one of the all-time career record by Andy Kelly. We have word that Reggie Ingram was not ejected from the game. Charlie Garner on the reception out to the left side, and then near to a first down after the reception. Mario Brunson getting the start at fullback in his final game at Neyland Stadium. Just great skilled people. How well they work together. Kevin Mays, the only junior. The rest of them are second-year guys. There's Mose Phillips. He's got the first down. And he's down to the 12, maybe the 11-yard line. Vanderbilt, of course, done this year. First down for the Volunteers. Schuler on a busted play will have to keep it himself and go out to the left side. And he'll get maybe a yard or so before he slides out of bounds. He doesn't run the football very much. That's his 46th carry of the year. He has scored three touchdowns on the ground. And he got a yard. It'll make it second and nine at the 10. Vance thought the uh, contact and their quarterback was a little bit beyond the sideline, too, particularly after that earlier on Sports of the Light conduct call. Well, with the sidelines wet like they are, we'll see a lot of apparent late hitting over there today. 16-game touchdown streak in motion. He goes to the right side, looking for a man open against the green, and it is picked off by Rico Francis. Francis didn't play at Florida last week because of a sprained ankle suffered against Navy, and he has his first interception of the year. So the Commodores, after turning it over themselves, get... An end zone look at the interception by Heath Schuler tried to throw back across his body. I guess he was looking for Craig Faulkner in the back end of the end zone, but badly underthrown. On the first play, Tony Jackson, forget it. Volunteers all over him. James Wilson from left end and Ben Talley from right linebacker. That's nothing unusual for number 90. He's number one on this team, and that's tackle number 87 this year. Bob, you talked about Vanderbilt not being a good second and long or third and long team, and I think with that in mind, Larry Marmee, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee, is going to try and be even more aggressive than Tennessee normally is on first down to set up the long yardage plays. Gordon with an inside pitch, but staying home to make the play was Tally. And I stand corrected, 82 tackles on the year now. That was a little delay, and they tried to pitch it inside to Tony Jackson, and there's a good job of just staying home. Well, it's a good, safe play to call on second and long, but Ben Talley able to change his route. You see how he was making his move to try and put pressure on the quarterback, but out of the corner of his eye, the junior saw Jackson sliding underneath. He broke down, got in position, made a nice tackle. Tony Jackson, four carries, minus three yards so far. And here's one of those third and long, third and 14. He's in trouble, and he is sacked back at the five. Shane Bonham with his fourth sack of the year all over the quarterback. And the Commodores are pushed back around the nine is where the forward progress was stopped. Tennessee leads the conference in quarterback sacks, and Shane Bonham came through almost untouched. Vandy trying to roll the pocket a little bit to help out Gordon, but no roll that time. Bill Merritt Angel, a redshirt freshman from his own goal line, and he hits a nice one. It sends Sean Summers back to his 48. He's got some room on the left side, stumbles inside the 40. And the Volunteers will get the football back with good field position again. Scoreless through the first six and a half minutes here in Knoxville, and we're back after this from your... Well, Jerry DiNardo's defense 
held, and then their offense couldn't move the football after the sack. Had to kick it away, and now the D is backed up again. Pete Schumer and company inside the Vanderbilt 40-yard line on first down. Charlie Garner off the left side, trying to get outside. He did a good job to get away from Allen Young. And he'll get about five on the play. Appeared he might be stopped at or behind the line of scrimmage. Well, Young, the defensive right end for Vanderbilt, playing with a pulled groin muscle, and obviously a, a game of this magnitude, he wants to be out there. Reads the down block of Jason Lehman, but then is really popped nicely by Jeff Smith, the pulling guard on the play, and Garner able to bounce outside. Second down and five, same man, cuts outside, up, first down inside the 25. And it took Gerald Collins, the middle linebacker, to stop him. Charlie Garner, they haven't used him as much this year as they did last year when he ran for a team leading 928 yards. But uh, he has a great two-year total, and he is a busy, busy guy in this multi-dimensional offense of Tennessee. Sure, out to the right side. Down around the 20, complete to Craig Faulkner, and Robert Davis wrestles him out of bounds. Well, after throwing the interception, you could see Tennessee came back with a couple of running plays, and on the first pass here for Schuler, just an easy little turnout by the inside receiver out of the twin set, Faulkner. That was done as much to regain some rhythm for Heath Schuler as it was to gain yards. Simple pattern, got a couple of yards. Second down and eight. We're beyond the halfway mark in the first quarter. No score so far. Garner off the right side, and he is cracked down hard by Gerald Collins. Collins is the leading tackler for the Commodores. That'll be around 94 or 5 on the season. And Shelton Quarles, who had such a great game last week at Florida, holding that right knee. I don't even know if he got hit or if that happened as he was just trying to get to the ball carrier and they also work in Mark Jeffco I think that's Jeffco in the ball game right now on third down and five Jeffco to 6 2 2 10 freshman Schuler looked left now goes right he's got Garner down around the 15 the ball is dropped and will they call it incomplete or a fumble They're calling it a fumble Vanderbilt has the football back. Byron King, the man recovering. Entry and Philip Fulmer is a little angry over there. Cliff Dees checks in for the Commodores offensively. Eric Willem, the wing back, the motion man. Straight ahead here, and there's not much there for Dees, the sophomore out of Houston. He was a freshman all SEC last year. That is 72nd carry. And James Wilson gets up after the tackle. That and Shane Bonham collapsed on that left side. Excuse me, Bob. That, that defensive front of Tennessee is a very vertical group. They are extremely aggressive, shooting the gaps when they think it's a, a, a good time to do it. And they have done that so far out of the tackle spots. Bonham with the sack before Wilson there. Vanderbilt's going to have to make some adjustments on their blocking schemes. Loss of two, second and 12. Play action, look out. Got him again, back around the five or the six. The first man there was Raymond Austin. The second guy there was the right end, Horace Morris. And a second sack of the day, 37 on the year now for the Vols. Safety blitz by Raymond Austin, number 28, right side of your screen. Gordon not able to get away from him. Morris finished it off. And Larry Marmy said, we're going to be aggressive, and they have really put Vanderbilt into situations in which their offense just does not perform that well. Not many offenses do, but... Well, especially one that doesn't throw the football very well. They call a draw play. Good yardage up the middle to about the 19-yard line for the wing. At the 14-yard gain, and he'll let this one go from about his own 10. John Summers has to come forward about five yards. They fake the reverse. He keeps it, and he will score! A 31-yard kick, a touchdown return of 51 yards, and Sean Summers 
Rams puts the Volunteers on the board. When you play in a big rivalry game, you always expect gadget play. Sometimes the best gadget is not to use one. And a good picket fence sit up there as well. Summers untouched up the sidelines. Tennessee, after a couple of short circuits, puts points up on the board. Dexford looking for his 115th consecutive extra point. Number two all-time in the SEC. And special teams play a big role here. 418 first quarter, fouls on. Tennessee has just stung Vanderbilt with that re fake reverse. Basically, they have used this play once before. They did it against Louisville. Philip Former was criticized for running up the score against the Cardinals, but he said they would practiced it and wanted to use it. Nilo Sylvan scored on that one. Today, they faked the reverse, and Sean Summers took it in. And it's 7-0 Tennessee, 4-18 from the end of the first quarter. Vanderbilt will have the football back again as John Bexford who set a new single-season SEC record with the extra points. And he sends one down to the three-yard line for Tony Jackson. He'll try to cut to the near side, still on his feet after breaking a tackle. And he's down at the 15. And the Vanderbilt offense goes back to work, but work they have not done so far. Six total yards on their first three possessions. Well, I think... Ronnie Gordon is going to be forced to do some play action passing on first down or some new wrinkle. They have to get that second and medium or second and short situation for themselves. Second and long is just not going to make it today. Working out of the eye bone. And the deep pitch to Jackson looking near side. Got a good block on the corner. And he's out of bounds almost to the 19 yard line. Jason. Willem, the motion man, they put it into the belly of the fullback, and Royce Love, the sophomore, drops it. Volunteers have the football. But was it dead? Ronald Davis coming up with it. But evidently, when Royce Love's knee touched down, he still had the ball. Watch the low angle here of the quick handoff to Love, the big 245-pound fullback, and... How many times have we heard ground cannot cause a fumble, and <laughs> that's when it took place. See, Love is down there, and then the ball pops loose. Third down and three for Vandy. They've got to get a first down. Option left. He's in trouble, and a big play in the backfield. It was Scott Gallion, the left side linebacker. He got great penetration and was right there with the quarterback. He makes the read, checks the dive, man. His second responsibility is the quarterback, and that was just an effort tackle right there. But you talk to the Tennessee coaches, and they say that's the way that, that this young man does everything. Full out, and that play there it turns out to force another play. Baron Angel punted seven times at Florida last week. This is third already, and he hits it off to the right a bit. He's going to get some bounce down to the 36 of Tennessee, maybe the 35, and uh, believe it or not, that's the deepest in their own territory. The Volunteers will start a 44-yard kick. Volunteers take over. Let's check in quickly with Bob. Yes, yeah, some good news for Vanderbilt. Shelton Port sure is right in the middle. Charlie Garner off the left side. He's got his turf shoes on today, doesn't he? Looks like he got enough for the first down up over the 45-yard line, out of bounds just beyond the 46. There's Shelton Quarles, the man that Bob was just talking about, back into the action. Boy, Mario Brunson with a fine block on Rico Francis to enable Garner to get around the corner again and pick up first down yardage. Garner came into the game 62 yards shy of 2,000. And he's got it on the deep give. Breaks two tackles, gets on the corner, another first down. And he's finally jersey dragged by Aaron Smith. Gerald Collins appeared to have him at the line of scrimmage, but Charlie Garner escaped. Watch the effort by Garner. Sort of, you relax yourself a little bit when you feel the contact, and you'd be surprised how many times 
tacklers bounce off of you because you're not tensed up and, and ready to go down. I'll tell you what I asked David Cutcliffe why he played so well last week against Kentucky. He said, because it was on grass. He said, this kid's a grass player. <laughs> Unfortunately for Charlie, the grass here at Neyland Stadium won't be in place until 94, and he'll be gone. But not too bad on carpet, let me tell you. After that 24-yard gain, Garner now averaging better than 10 yards a carry. And he's closer and closer to 2,000. David said he's better on grass because he says, if anything, Garner cuts so hard on the carpet wears down his joints. Sure just keeps giving it to number 30. The crack off the right side. That's by John DeWitt and company. And that ball is on the carpet. What's going on now? It's a little slippery out there. Three wide receivers on second down and eight. Play action to Garner. Schuler ahead. And that was a wrong pattern run somewhere. It's Schuler, but he's not had uh, a real good feel for the fo football so far throwing it. Facing now a third down and eight. Out of the shotgun with plenty of time. He's got his man down inside the 10. And that is Billy Williams for the second time today. Big play for a first down, first and goal at the seven after a 21-yard completion. Outstanding protection by the guys out front. One, two, three, four, five seconds before he released the football on the deep crossing dig route by Billy Williams. When a quarterback has that much time, he's always going to find somebody open in the middle because the defense has to separate to cover more territory. First and goal from the seven. Schuler shotgun again. Looking right, and it's just off the fingertips of Corey Fleming. And the fans down in the end zone thought Rico Francis was all over him for pass interference. Corey trying to get his 19th career touchdown for the Volunteers. Running the quick slant out of the spread formation. didn't like it but that camera work which was outstanding by the way clearly showed that the ball hit Fleming's hands before Francis hit him now whether Rico grabbed him coming off the line of scrimmage well that's a different story volunteers came in 43 out of 51 in the orange zone nothing much today their only score came from a punt return Schuler strikes off the tackle man open but he's out of the end zone Craig Faulkner he was wide open but his momentum carried him out by the time the ball got there. Now it's third and goal from the seven with four wide receivers. Blitz coming and encroachment there by Shelton Quarles. James Manley may have come up as well, battling with Bubba Miller in the middle. A couple of flags. I think Quarles actually bumped Manley into the Tennessee offensive line. Dead ball foul, offsides on the defense. It'll still be third and goal. They'll go half the distance down just inside the four. Quarles kept on coming. The whistle stopped, and Heath says, back off, big guy. And Shelton didn't like the uh, foot in the air. What that penalty does, though, is it enables Tennessee to create more options from the eight. You know they're going to throw from the four. They can, they can perhaps run the ball and maybe run it twice. Most Phillips, the lone setback, he'll block. They reverse it to go right side, and there's nothing there for Corey Fleming. Well, tried to run that little fold screen. It worked well earlier in the ball game to Fleming for big yardage. Kicking team is on. A 22-yarder from the right hash. And the first quarter has ended. The second quarter will start with John Bexford's 12th attempt of the year. The special team touchdown as Tennessee leading. John Bexford's field goal attempt will get things started this year. And a chip shot, 22 yards from the right hash. Mark Holland, the snapper. Hold 
hold of Lance Wheaton, no problem there. A nine play, 60 yard scoring drive. And Tennessee goes up 10 nothing on the first play of the second quarter. Let's have a look at our Lee Apparel first quarter statistics. And it shows that Vanderbilt is having some of the same struggles offensively it had last week in the ball game at Florida. Bob Kessling downstairs. You know, John Bexford learned this week he was named first team All-American as a kicker. Uh, he said he got the news Wednesday night when his girlfriend called him. She saw the news on the news. He didn't believe her and didn't believe it until he got to practice Thursday morning. And the coaches said, hey, you're first team All-American. He was thrilled by that. And it's been an interesting year for John Beckford. He was suspended in the spring because he was caught throwing water balloons out of the dorm room. So they suspended him. He was able to then to put things back together, got back in the good graces of the university and the athletics department, and has come on to be an All-American kicker. He's the first here at Tennessee since Ricky Townsend back in 1972-73. Well, I guarantee you one thing. Those water balloons probably went straight in the middle between two street lights. Probably split the uprights perfectly. Probably the first guy kicking water balloons out of the windows, right? So the statistical picture not looking good for Vanderbilt. They'll get the football back here early in the second quarter. Tennessee leads 10-0. Kenny Simon is back deep. Maybe the Commodores need a big play on special teams here. Considering how bad those stat numbers look, Bob, to be down just 10 to nothing gives Vanderbilt some hope. Simon started returning kicks last week for the first time this year. Here he comes to the near side. He will have pretty good yardage out near the 30, and he's down at the 33-yard line. Commodore is looking to go forward here. Gordon options right, and there's the pitch to Jermaine Johnson, and he is hammered right in front of the Commodore bench. Jason Parker says, how you doing, guys? This is where we play our home games. Well, when you run the option, you have to expect contact coming to a running back as a rule by the outside linebacker or one of the safeties. There are the players to give the run support on the option, and Parker filled it very nicely for the balls. After a five-yard gain, Gordon, well, that's a bad pitch. Squirted out of bounds, untouched. It'll be a rather hefty loss of about nine yards. Jermaine Johnson was in the area, but I mean, there was no way he was going to field this one. Well, here's a situation where the redshirt freshman just has to eat this football. Either that or the other freshman, Jermaine Johnson, has to be in a better spot to catch it. Well, he gave up on it. I mean, he thought that Ronnie Gordon was just going to take the hit and go down and set up third down. And he slowed up a little bit. Gordon got the pitch off, but no relationship at all between Gordon and Johnson. Another one of those third and long, third and 14 here. Gordon under pressure, throws the screen. Tally misses a tackle, but that slows the play up and up where his teammates can catch up. They tried to black, block Ben Tally, but they just couldn't get him clean out of there. And he really messed up the play, and Vanderbilt's timing was ruined. Tell you what, Mr. Gordon had an awful lot of heat coming on him. Sean Summers awaiting another kick of Bill Merritt Angel. They will fake it and go right side. Now the punter gets the pitch, and it's short. It looked like they were heading for the first down. Great play by Raymond Austin, who started to tackle the up man, Jeff Brothers and then ended up finishing off Marin Angel. Now there's Brothers, the ex-quarterback on the carry. Raymond Austin comes over and made Brothers feel like he was gonna hit him, and Brothers gave up the football too soon. Excellent play by the freshman out of Lawton, Oklahoma. And the volunteers have it on downs. Inside the 40, they'll fake the end around, and Schuler goes long. Right side of the end zone, almost intercepted. Knocked down there by Robert Davis. Second down, James Stewart. And he's down close to a first down inside the 30 of Vanderbilt. First 
carry today for James Littleman Stewart. The big battle in Gainesville is all FSU so far. They led 10 nothing at one point at the swap second quarter there. And get up to date on this rather abbreviated schedule of college football today. Pete Schuler angling across. For a great reception. 22 yards and about the last five of it while juggling. Like the great Houdini here. Somehow Faulkner one hand, tried a couple of times and then put it away. What an effort by the senior out of Richmond, Kentucky in his last game at Neyland Stadium. You know, and I think number 19, Eric Vance, thought he was going to pick that ball off. Faulkner tipped it away from him. First and goal, Volunteers. Stewart, left side. He is into the end zone. James Stewart, couple of big carries on that possession. And he scores his seventh touchdown of the year on the ground. familiar for them the last two weeks trying to set up shop and hold the fort in their own end of the field and after their 56th TD of the year the volunteers tack on the extra point but a flag flies by the way that breaks a Tennessee school record they had scored 55 touchdowns in both 1951 and 1990 and they've tacked on two for the record here today. Dead ball foul, false start on the offense. Only four plays, 39 yards after Vanderbilt failed to convert the fake punt on fourth down. This will make it about a 25-yarder for Bexford. So looking for number 116 consecutive. Right down the middle. And that water balloon makes it 17-0. 12-11 to go before halftime. Volunteers rolling at home as Heath Schuler gives off to James Stewart. Easy touchdown. to you in parts. But there's Jack Corrigan alongside today with Bob Kessling on the sidelines and a 17-0 Tennessee lead. Less than three minutes into the second quarter. Bexford, another kickoff. Kenny Simon is back deep for the Commodores. Ball angling toward the pylon and out of bounds. Turn the ball over. Not to say that... Uh, Tennessee would not be leading in this game, but I think Bandy's upset hopes would have been greatly helped had they been more effective on that initial drive and come away with some points or at least back Tennessee up deep in their own territory. The deepest Tennessee has started has been their own 35-yard line, knows the football at the 35 for the Commodores. Three wide receivers. Only two men behind the quarterback in the eye. A little play action and a roll to the right. And a quick one to the tight end, Jason Tomachev. He's out to the 41-yard line. It'll be a game sixth reception of the year. And there's Reggie Ingram with a quick stop on Jermaine Johnson. Now, throughout the recent years of this series, Vanderbilt has led at halftime the last six times. Uh, doesn't look like that's going to happen today unless they get three or four scores in 11 minutes here. Now here's a, they, they desperately need this first down right here. They've got to give their defense a break. Third down and one. Gordon keeping. And he appears to have it. Had to get right to the 45. You might, that strategy has also forced the freshman to make some bad pitching decisions. 
intercepted. It was tipped by Ben Talley, and then the ball was in the air just for a moment in front of the face of James Wilson. That's the Vanderbilt reaction to Austin. See him there down close to the line of scrimmage. He steps up, so you throw right over his head, but Talley got his arms up, doing his job pressuring. They wanted to hit Simon on a quick little hitch route, but good job, boy. I, now I know why they call Talley a big play player. I mean, he always is around the football. Second down and 10 for the Commodores. Option right. And there's Talley. There to make the tackle. Watch Ben Talley again. He's reading the action of the quarterback when he makes the decision to keep it rather than pitch it. Steps up and makes a good tackle. Ronnie Gordon now, seven rushes, 21 yards. And the Commodores have to come up with something on third and nine. They need to get to the volunteer 44-yard line to keep the football. Deep, straight drop. And it's intercepted by Jason Parker. He's taken down at the 47 of Vanderbilt. And it's Parker with his fourth interception of the year, the eighth of his career, and he's only a second-year man. Tennessee using a little more zone coverage this year against Vanderbilt than they did a season ago, in part because of the inexperience at quarterback for Vanderbilt. See Parker, the top right-hand corner of your screen. He's just the deep safety in coverage, reading the quarterback, stepping back right in front of the receiver. Not a very well-thrown ball by Ronnie Gordon. Simon cut behind Parker, and it looked like he was the intended receiver. Well, Tim Foley has a favorite line. He says, usually when you get an interception, it's because they throw the ball right to you. I think that may have applied. Play action by Schuler. He will go up top and deep far sideline. I love the coaching philosophy of going for the home run ball after a turnover. You've got the opposition emotionally down anyway, so let it fly. Byron King had good coverage. He just had no idea where the football was, and Joey Kent, the speedster, broke back nicely to get the touchdown reception. Expert again. And with 9.30 to go before halftime, Tennessee moves out 24-0. His 25th touchdown pass of the year. And now he's had one in the last 17 games at least. Run the play action pass on the first play after the interception. Get man coverage on the outside and the speedster. Joey Kent up the sidelines against Byron King makes the grab. How's this for productivity, Bob? He's caught 10 balls on the year for five touchdowns. That's not bad. Every other time you make a catch, you're in the end zone. I like that. Well, Joey Kent, a redshirt freshman out of Huntsville, Alabama. A couple of touchdowns last week against the Kentucky Wildcats. He's on a roll right now, that young man. And quite obviously, he can get it up the field in a hurry, too. He ran right by Byron King. Averaging 18 yards a catch until today. And he's jumped up the average. Five TDs now. Bexford the kick. Kenny Simon packed at his own two. He will angle left side between the hash marks and jukes his way out to the 20 and a flag at the 16. Like a lot of young quarterbacks look like Bernie Kozar last week with the Cowboys with the, all the plays on his wrist. Option left. Gordon keeping a late pitch. He's got a man open. There's a flag on the play. 
And going all the way is Jermaine Johnson. But it's probably coming back. A flag lying at the six-yard line of Vanderbilt. Now, that was a great decision by Gordon to get open and then pitch it late. We'll check the flag. Jermaine's previous long run, only 23 yards. We have an illegal block in the back during the run. Well, you know what these Tennessee fans are thinking, don't you? See if we can another shutout today is what they're after. See if we negated a 90-plus yard touchdown run of Jermaine Johnson. Turnovers and penalties hurting the Commodore offense again. 9.02 before halftime. It'll be a first and 14 for the Vaz. Excuse me, for the Commodores. Back inside their own five-yard line, and Ronnie Gordon wants to call the first timeout. Well, that's the frustration that Vanderbilt has faced all season long with their offense. I mean, they're a, a group that wants to dominate the clock to keep the players as a youngster growing up. Richmond Flowers. I became a receiver because I wanted to be like Richmond Flowers. <laughs> First down and 14. Roll in motion. Take in the end zone. Gordon. Intended for Eric Lewis and good tight defense by that true freshman Raymond Austin. He's having a big day and that guy right there number 98 Corey Stone a junior out of Memphis fought off the block and pressures Ronnie Gordon and came oh so close to getting the safety. Good defense downfield though you're right I mean it's been good coverage by the Tennessee people in the secondary. You know, it must be quite an honor to be a member of that 68 team. First team in college football history ever to have turf toe. What an honor. And turf burns on the elbows and That's knees. Right. Second down and 14. Gordon to the first man through. And is Derek Lewis, who he tried to throw to a moment ago. A little breathing room for the Commodores, but they're still not out to their own five. And with third down and 13 coming up, Bill Merritt Angel, the punter, thinking about what may be a heel close to the end line in a moment. We showed that graphic before where Tennessee has averaged starting on the Vanderbilt 47 in this game. And unless uh, Vandy can come up with a big third down play here, again, it'll be outstanding field position for the Tennessee offense. You only have to go half the field or less. You're going to score a lot. Pitch on third down. Johnson coming near side. He's out to the seven. Good play on the corner out there. Leland Taylor. Backs up Paul Yatkowski at right tackle. Taylor, a redshirt freshman from Louisville. They have such great quickness in their front seven. The down linemen and the linebackers react and get to the ball so well. I think that's a, a real credit to a football team that defensively is not that big. Quickness can make up for a smaller team. There an angel from a yard or two deep, and he floats one beautifully out to the midfield stripe. Summers cuts right, gets a couple of blocks, loose at the 30. The kicker tries to get him, and Marin Angel pops him out of bounds. A 43-yard kick, all but seven of it back on the return. He hit the ball well, Marin Angel, but he outkicked his coverage. And that happens many times when you punt deep in your own territory. You're in the protect mode to make sure you don't get the punt locked. Good hit by Marin Angel. But see the space that Summers has? good five yards before there was anybody there and really the rest of the Vandy tacklers were well back and how about this for a place to start Carter on first down he will score and he's got 
got some offensive linemen down there with him, too. That touchdown run puts Charlie Garner over 2,000 yards for his career. The fourth Tennessee player to do it. The route is on, 30 nothing fouls. Charlie Garner showing you the lower body strength that he has. Not only the versatility and the cutback strength, but just the flat out power right there as he was not going to be kept out of the end zone. Next heard another one. And it's 31 nothing with 7.05 to go in the first half. And you're watching a record setting run for Charlie Garner's career. Look at what the Volunteers have done their last three games. Add that to what they're doing today. A pretty unbelievable advantage they've had in their last four ball games. 148 to 13 coming in and 31 more tacked on here today. The All-American Bexford to kick it. Men, Derek Willem. Near side, no room. He's tackled forward to about the 16. And a little celebration there by Tori Noel, a freshman out of Memphis. And a late flag as well thrown in. They're now at halftime at the swap. Good ball game, six points spread between the Seminoles and the Gators. At the half as well, a high-scoring game at Michigan State today. In the Big Ten, and things aren't looking good for the Nittany Lions. Another mistake by the Commodores. Another block in the back will put them inside their 10-yard line. Bill Fulmer wins last year against Southwestern Louisiana at Georgia, then Florida here. Beat Boston College in the Hall of Fame Bowl. And then he's tacked on an 8 1 and 1 this year. Vanderbilt with the ball inside their own eight. Gordon a pitch on the corner. Jermaine Johnson, and he's out to about the 13. Nick Jester, a linebacker. Jason Parker for free safety on the stops. Back to Coach Fulmer for a moment, Bob. I couldn't help yesterday, but catch the, the look in his eye when we were talking about the season and how it's unfolding. And, you know, in, in a lot of ways, Tennessee right now is the best team in the Southeastern Conference. I mean, they mm -hmm. are, are really a team that you'd have to consider for national uh, title aspirations, but the early loss to Florida and the tie to Alabama took that away, unfortunately. And the ball never did get snapped before several blocks were made. Second down and 10, an opener to Jermaine Johnson. He's got good yardage out to the 19. That'll be enough for a Vanderbilt first down. Either side when you do that. Vanderbilt, his fourth first down of the day. They run the two oh, high ball, and there's the pitch that Johnson has to scramble and fall to pick up. I'm not sure I've ever seen a Division I team have as much trouble making pitches on the option as Vanderbilt has the last two weeks. Now, the opposing defenses of Florida and Tennessee have something to do with that. Well, what they've done is they've really attacked the quarterback, and they're doing it with the safeties a lot of times. There you saw number 22 for Tennessee, Jesse Sanders, actually an outside linebacker, come and make a pretty good quick pop and force Gordon to make a pitch before the tailback is ready to receive it. Second down now and 19 with 440 to go before halftime. Draw play. And not much there for Eric Lewis. John Emery, who backs up Reggie Ingram at that middle linebacker spot, redshirt freshman on the tackle. And if you're a defensive player, you keep seeing the other team put itself into long yardage situations I mean you've got a smile as as wide as can be because you can be so aggressive 
figuring that even if you over pursue or overplay a particular action, they have so much yardage to make up, you have time to recover. Now it's third down and 20. Gordon near his own goal line. While being tackled, he gets it away, and Kenny Simon dropped it. Shane Bonham was all over Ronnie Gordon had the pass been completed. Nowhere near first down the yardage. I give Ronnie Gordon credit for hanging in here. Somehow, in the grasp of Shane Bonham right in the middle of your screen, Gordon was able to keep his knee up long enough to get this ball away, and Kenny Simon was looking for the tacklers before he put the ball away. This time, the Vols put Billy Williams in punt return formation. And a bad oh. shot. Straight out of bounds by Bill Merritt Angel. This one will be marked at the 23. 11 yards on the kick. It's not downhill for Tennessee. It's like the slide at Disney World, Typhoon Lagoon. I mean, you're gaining speed coming down this hill, and it's like Mount Everest for Vanderbilt. Never got a real good grip on the ball and was concerned about the pressure, and that's that looked like a carpenter drive off the fourth tee. You got that right. Shank City, 3.42 to go. Schiller for Garner, turns the corner. And he'll get out of bounds down around the 18. Charlie Garner has gone over 2,000 today with his effort. Joining Johnny Jones, 81 to 84. Kurt Watson, 69 to 71. The great Reggie Cobb, 87 to 89 as the other Tennessee 2,000 yard rushers. And Philip Fulmer takes a great deal of pride in that. The offensive line is his baby. James Stewart now behind Schuler. David Horn in the slot left. They'll go off right side and a cutback for Stewart. He's inside the 15. Taken Game down there over. by Alan Young. When you see the spread formation, the one back offense, yes, it is a passing formation, but with the offensive line that Tennessee has, the strength they have at tailback, and their versatility, they really cut down on the number of people available between the tackles for the defense and you have a chance with plays like this to get into the secondary in a hurry with your running game. Third down and one. Stewart again. And he appeared to have enough before the Commodores stopped him. Had to get to the 13. Officials appear to be marking it between the 11 and the 12 so the volunteers will move the chains again. Well there's the heir apparent Stewart. A junior out of Morristown, Tennessee. Good average of six yards a carry this year. And he's a good pass catcher as well. He's caught passes 12 times. A lot more size than, than Garner. Might not have the elusiveness of Charlie Garner, but definitely a power back type at 210 pounds. On first down, Garner back in there. Schuler takes to him. Goes left. And it is tipped away. Byron King with a good play. And guess who the intended receiver was? That's right, brother. Little brother, yeah. Benji Schuler. Good play. Bryson City, Swain County High School. And Garner stops short. And we'll have some scores and highlights. Scores of other games, highlights from this Tennessee dominance in the first half. On third down and ten, Schuler from the shotgun fights off Shelton Quarles into the end zone, and it's too tall there for Joey Kent. One of the times he was throwing to it went over everybody. 28-yard attempt now for Bexford, and he's got it. Two for two today, 12 for 13 on the year, plus a gazillion extra points in a row.
and the Volunteers tack on three more, lead 34-0, Bob Kessling. Yeah, this, Bob, this Tennessee team has been dominant since the Alabama game in mid-October. But the problem is the way the SEC's bowl arrangements are set up and the coalition, it looks like Tennessee won't have a chance to play for the national championship. We asked Coach Fulmer about that situation yesterday and what he thought about his team and the bowls coming up. You can't help, you know, the coalition aside, you can't help but let it let your mind run on occasion to the what if this was a normal year and have the opportunity to play as a wherever we end up, you know, third, fourth, fifth, whatever it is, play in one of the major bowls and possibly play against uh, the person that do, might be number one or close to number one and having a game uh, and where we played well and, and won and then see what happens. But uh, that's not the case. As we had our opportunities early in the year when we played at Florida and didn't get it and played hard, but we didn't play particularly well. And we had our opportunities at Alabama where we just didn't close the door all the way. So we're excited about where we are and the progress that we made. And, and uh, personally, I would like to see a championship playoff type system in some way that didn't put a whole lot more pressure on the players. But uh, I think it should be one on the field. But the Volunteers are making a statement to end this season. Last week, they pummeled Kentucky and doing pretty much the same today to Vanderbilt. Good way to put it, Bob. Kickoff return, Tony Jackson across the 30 near side, out to the 33-yard line. And Jack Corgan, as long as football is played only once a week, is involved very much in those slower divisions. And I well, think they've got a big voice in this whole thing. I don't think there's any question about that. There's an awful lot of political and financial ramifications but I agree with coach Fulmer I hope somewhere down the line they can work something out to have a national championship decided where it should be out on the field not in some poll yeah. that championship game might have the longest list of corporate names you'll ever <laughs> see anyway you might need a whole bunch of letterhead for the name of that game second down and four for the Commodores decent field position after the kickoff return Boys love the fullback. And they will be that guy. Gordon stopped right at the line of scrimmage. John Emery, the man hugging him, and then a lot of orange in the area. At the 43 for the Commodores. Let's see what they talked about during the timeout. Gordon to Simon. Sort of an underneath pattern, and right with him was Tennessee's number 45, Nick Jester mention All-American at Fairdale High School in Louisville. Defensive end and a fullback. Well, he must have been fun to tackle. There's a screen up the near sidelines and getting out of bounds with some help is Eric Lewis. 42 yards away from the end zone. 13 seconds and the timeout remaining. Gordon to the sideline and stepping out is Tony Jackson. First reception of the day for Tony, his seventh of the year. Came in number three in the SEC with 128 all-purpose yards per game. Tony has been very quiet today. Really hasn't been able to get much going with his quarterback on the option runs. Six seconds to go. A first down at the 30. They're going to drive the field goal from 47 yards on the near hash. Steve Yenner, the junior, It's way right. May not have been long enough either. Yenner now 8 for 13 on the year. And the first half comes to an end with Tennessee leading Vanderbilt 34 nothing. It was so only 7 nothing at the end of the first quarter. But a couple of expert field goals a James Stewart run, a Joey Kent long reception, a Charlie Garner 13 yard run. And Tennessee in full control, up by 34, halfway through, and they look like they're going to go 9-1-1 one one on the year. Here's Bob with the coach. Coach, give your thoughts on the first half. Well, obviously, I'm very pleased with the defense, and our kicking game is helping us, certainly, and we've got a lot of points, but a lot of them set up by the defense. We need to play a little better offensively and finish up good, and I'm obviously pleased with where we are. You went for the juggler in the first half after the turnovers. One Absolutely. right Absolutely. You know, we felt like we got two scores quickly and both of them outstanding players plays by outstanding players Did you pointed on in the second half well, we'll we just want to play a lot of people and come out of it healthy and, and uh, get as many as we can i guess coach fellow former his team very impressive in the first half shutting out vanderbilt back with halftime activities from knoxville 
in just a moment. The Lee Apparel from Knoxville in just a moment. They, they've got two plays, the touchdown drives only took one play. They've got another touchdown drive under a minute. Heath Schuler again has had a big first half, and the Tennessee defense has completely throttled Vanderbilt. Remember last week, Vanderbilt was beaten by Florida 52 to nothing, so they've been outscored 86 to nothing the past two games. Let's take a look back last week to games of the SEC and our big plays of the week. 34 nothing at halftime. I think Jack Corrigan I figured out what Vols, V-O-L-S, means. Very offensive. And for the defense, little scoring for the other guys. Boy, they have been impressive the last two weeks. Dominated Kentucky last week. They've done the same here. Took them a little while to get started, Bob, but once they did, they have been impressive, particularly the defense. Not like their offense needed a whole lot of help. Special teams got things started today in the scoring column. It was a punt by Bill Marin Angel. And Sean Summers got it at his own 49, faked the reverse, and there he goes. Well, the fake reverse, again, as I said, in a rivalry game, many times you expect some kind of trick play, and when they sh showed the reverse, it made Vandy think that it was going to happen, and when they didn't, well, you saw what transpired. Our RICO halftime stats show the Tennessee edge in first downs, rushing, passing, and total offense, even time of possession, which is something Vanderbilt normally prides itself on. Turnovers have played a part. They have hurt the visiting team much more than they have hurt the home team. And where drives started, not on the screen there, Bob, was also a very significant factor. Tennessee, most of the time, had less than half the field to cover to get it into the end zone. And the Commodores will have to kick the football to start the second half. Billy Williams, Charlie Garner, the deep men for the Volunteers, on their way to a 9-1-1 regular season record. And Steve Yetter's kick is a low-line drive that finds its way inside the pylon and through the end zone. And after all those first-half possessions, this will be only the second time all day Tennessee starts in their own territory. Well, you can tell by the uh, comments of Philip Fulmer as he went off the field to talking about Kessling at the end of the first half, Bob, that he wants his uh, number one offensive unit out there to go out and have a productive drive, put some points in the board. He was not happy overall with the way his offense played. Volunteers in the eye and a quick pitch out to Faulkner. Shelton, Billy Williams, Joey Kent, Nilo Sylvan, Benji Schuler, a name to remember. No gain on that play on second and ten. And up over the 30-yard line is Charlie Garner and Gerald Collins. They get him from behind, and it looks like they might mark it a little bit short. We certainly want to praise Charlie Garner for his 1,000-yard season and give a lot of credit to that offensive line for getting him to that lofty plateau. But you also want to credit a guy who you don't think about all the time, the guy playing fullback, whether it's been Moe Phillips or Mario Brunson, they've done a good job leading the way for Garner. On third down and one, he has to work hard to get that one. And this time his tight end, David Horn, was in there blocking for him. And Charlie Garner will move the chains. Coming into today, needed 62 yards to reach 2,000. Well beyond that. And they just announced the Florida State 22-7 lead, second half, over the Gators. here at Knoxville say too bad that's not a conference game. <laughs> Charlie Garner out to the right side and tripped up on the corner by Rico Francis. Good penetration by Rico Francis, the senior out of Louisville. He did a nice job of recognizing the play early. He and number 40 right there, Gerald Collins. Watch 39 and 40. Step one way and now the reaction by Francis as he fought off the blocker. He makes the tackle without ever actually touching the ball carrier because 
he knocked down the lead blocker right into Charlie Garner. Single back set on second down and nine. And a draw play to Moe Phillips. Found himself back there a little deeper than he normally does. Brian Boykin tripped him up. But as we look back on our two years of covering SEC football, I don't think any of us will ever forget the play Moe Phillips made last year at South Carolina. Had they not been upset by the Gamecocks in that game, probably would have gone down as one of the great touchdown pass receptions in all of Tennessee history. Fourth quarter broke about seven tackles, but they couldn't hold on to win. What a shining moment for the man who's now the unsung hero at fullback. Down and six, five receivers out there, and Schumer misfires up the middle. Uh, it's got to be hot pizza pie to stay hot on a day like today. What does the clock downtown say now? 40 degrees. 40 degrees, same as a game time. Hey, what though? Those seats get a little bit colder as the game wears on. Well, so see, the thing you fortify however you can, Bob, you know? The thing you want to do is you want to stock up at halftime because when you get up, the seat is freezing when you sit back down. Tom Hutton with a punt. Left footer. Whistling one down to the 32. Jeff Brothers. After a yard or two. John Emery in the tackle. 33 on the kick. One on the return. 310 into the second half. 34 zip. Volunteers. Take up the turf. Associate Athletic Director Mitch Barnard's here. You're going to sell the turf and make a lot of money, you hope, huh? Well, we hope to have some memorabilia go on the walls of, this, of uh, the dens and and living rooms around the, the place. We've got the checkerboard. We're going to put it inside a frame with a little tag on it and have some fun with it. You're going to sell the UT in the middle of the field and the yard lines and everything. That's going to be up to a bid, and uh, people can dial in and get 1-800-BALL-TURF, and they can get an opportunity to bid on it or buy a piece of the turf as they are right now and hopefully, put some, uh, hopefully get some money back to try and help build the field. Talk a little bit about also the... Uh, the situation you got a 1-800 number people all over the country have been calling this number already haven't they? Oh it's been amazing we've only been up and running about a week and it's just been a lot of fun uh, the uh, we had a lot of calls we've sold a lot of the pieces already we've got a lot more turf there's 88,000 square feet out here so <laughs> we got a lot of turf to sell but hopefully we'll have some uh, some things on the walls here fairly soon. Now this is just a sample we want to uh, don't alarm anybody you haven't cut the turf already but this is what one of the pieces is going to look like. Uh, we got four different pieces we've got a paperweight we've got a floor mat and we've got a regular piece of the green turf, and then this is the checkerboard end zone, which there is limited edition because we just have a limited amount of end zone. It's $99.95, and uh, we can get it framed for you and have a certificate for you for Christmas and, and uh, in your uh, living room in January. What's the price scale now? What's the lowest? $19.95 for the paperweight, uh, $49.95 for the green matted uh, turf, and uh, $69.95 for the floor mat, which is 18 by 32. And who knows about the middle of the field? 1-800-VOL-TURF. You just <laughs> dial up, put your bid in. All right, turf's up here, guys. Well, I guess that's one way Kessling will see the end zone in the stadium. <laughs> the former volunteer. And there's a pitch to Jermaine Johnson. Ball is loose, and the volunteers have it. Recovering James Wilson. You can get up now, guys. Well, James Wilson from Hampton, Virginia, in his final game as a volunteer at Neyland Stadium. The beneficiary of another... Vanderbilt Boo Boo. Scott Gallion with the helmet hit. Shane Bonham with the wrap as well. And James Wilson with the recovery. So after the interception was negated by the interference call, Vandy still gives it back to Tennessee and actually better field position than after the INT. Schuler takes a hit and releases low and short to Craig Faulkner. And it was Gerald Collins in the backfield to give Schuler a rough ride. Eric Vance, the man downfield with pass coverage. Well, Vandy anticipating the play action pass this time sent Gerald Collins on a blitz right up the middle. He was slowed up enough on the play fake to enable Schuler to get the ball away, but not enough to enable Heath to hit the intended target. Not a huge day for Heath, nine for 18, 123 yards. Make the corner and roll right. Commodore's getting to him on the corner. He hits Craig Faulkner. 
and that'll be about a yard to have short of a first down inside the 40 of Vanderbilt. Faulkner coming in needed seven catches today to tie Carl Perkins for number four on the all-time list at 110. He has got four catches, taking him up to 107. He has passed Anthony Hancock with that catch. Third down and two for the Vols. Second man, Charlie Garner. Outside, first down inside the 25. Sheldon Quarles rode him for a while. Now the gunner took him right down the field. And the Volunteers will move the chains again. Well, he's got some quicks, doesn't he? Watch this great move by Charlie Garner on the corner. That ability to hop and step and skip and jump by people and the strength as well. Sheldon Quarles had him by the collar, but Charlie was not going to go down easily. Well, he didn't last week either against Kentucky. You mentioned his stats, Jack. He averaged 9.8 yards a carry in that 48-0 shutout at Lexington. Here he goes again, up the middle. Inside the 15, near the 10. And another first down. All the safeties are getting the tackles when this guy carries. Aaron Smith that time. Well, you can talk about 1,000-yard rushes, and certainly that is an outstanding achievement, but... What equals that for Garner, and maybe even more impressive from a pure football sense, the fact that on the year, he is well over seven yards a carry. You see today over eight yards a carry. When you're doing that, I mean, you're a real terror to the opposition. And the guy's gonna gain nearly first down yardage every time he touches the football. This calls number 30 again, does Schuler. Looked like he was stopped at the seven. Sudden you look up and there's a pile of guys down at the four. And it'll be second and goal. A little extension to the shoulder pads to protect the kidney area. That's a good development in equipment. Bueller to most Phillips. <laughs> His offensive lineman trying to scrum him right into the end zone. Looks like he's down about the one yard line somehow. Byron to Groffin Reed on the stop. Moe Phillips uh, Jr. out of Hillsboro High School. He's a Nashville kid who came up to Knoxville to play for the Vols. Wilson Garner behind Schuler. Phillips got the call. Touchdown, Tennessee. He broke the plane and then broke away from everybody. And that, for most Phillips, is his third rushing touchdown of the year. Nice to see the wealth getting spread around a little bit. Well, and for Mose, this touchdown serves two purposes. It adds to his total. And when he goes home over the break between the end of the season and the start of preparations for a bowl game, he can go back to Nashville and see all his buddies and the ones that go to Vanderbilt and say, I had no problems. Bragging rights mean everything. Yeah, it looks like the officials are talking to both teams down there on the heels of maybe a little over-celebrating, maybe a little taunting. These teams don't like a whole, each other a whole lot. Field on sort of a diagonal and kept the Tennessee team away from the Vanderbilt team as they were leaving the field. Expert with another extra point attempt. And another perfect one. 41-0 Volunteers with 8.23 to go in the third quarter. We're back after this from your local SEC station. Kick off back at their own 20 after the personal foul. We'll see what the Commodores can come up with in terms of field position here. 8.23 to go third quarter. Tennessee 41-0. Tony Jackson, the deep man, and he's back at his own 15. with a low line drive on the fly. Gabe Banks on the return. 
and to the near side. He is cracked out of bounds at the Vandy 45. Touchdown, Mose, of course. He says his pride and joy is his car, which is a 1968 Dodge Cornette. You can see it right in front of the football complex. And I asked you one time, Mose, what's the name of the car? And he says, the name is Hanidza. And I said, Hanidza, what does that mean? He said, he needs an oil change, he needs the air conditioning worked on, and he needs the windows rolled down. But you can see Mose tooling around in his car. It's his pride and joy, and I guess he's very proud of his touchdown as well just a minute ago. Well, he needed a touchdown until a few moments ago. Ronnie Gordon will go left, and he's got his man straight ahead, Derek Willem, and that's down. Tennessee 35 yard line. Andy continues. That guy gets to the deep man, Cliff Dees, and he's to the 35, maybe. Reggie Ingram on the stop in the middle. First down run by Johnson that got called back because of an illegal block. There has rarely been any running room at all for the Vanderbilt tailbacks out of the option. That's why Tony Jackson has had such a quiet day. Whoops. Brian Josie, the sophomore, playing over. And also a possible record-setting win today. You know, there's some controversy. Vandy and UT do not agree on the series record. Second down and 14. Gordon gives off to Dees. A nice spin to get away from one man, but the problem was he was set up for Scott Gallion to put him away. Pools mutual satisfaction. The issue has never been resolved. Third down and 12. Gordon escapes one flurry on the run, hitting his man, and that will be ruled out of bounds. Derek Willow. Vanderbilt claiming the defender sent the receiver out. Jason Parker with the hit on Derek Willow. Pretty good effort here by Ronnie Gordon to avoid the pressure. Willem makes the catch, and that should have been a catch, I think, because it looked to me like he would have stayed in bounds if not for the contact from Jay. And 12 for Vanderbilt. Gordon with time, and it is caught by Kenny Simon, but he's short. Down to the 30. They had to reach the 25. Ben Talley on the tackle, and the ball will change hands with 6.08 to go in the third quarter. We'll take a timeout from Knoxville. It's all Tennessee, 41 zip, second half. Wrapped up tightly and warmly today. First down for the Volunteers of Tennessee. Working with a new quarterback, the junior, Jerry Colquitt. But the same tailback, Charlie Garner. He will go across midfield, and he's down inside the Vandy 40. That makes a big day a large day. Came in number 20 in the country in Russia and number three in the Southeastern Conference, and Charlie had a huge hole up over the left side, and you give that much space to a great running back, he's gonna do the job you'd expect, 33 yards in all. Oh, quit an Oak Ridge boy, All-Stater. A junior. He's had pretty good success. He's completed 16 of 22 passes this year. Gives it off to James Little Man Stewart. Byron DeGroffenried pulling him down from behind. Oquit has completed 73% of his passes. He's thrown for four touchdowns. You couple that with what Heath Schuler has done, and they're up in that uh, Florida territory in terms of two quarterbacks with a good number of touchdown passes. That's why they set a school record for touchdowns in a season. Second down and three for the clock under five minutes, third quarter. We'll quit rolling, nobody open. He'll run for the first down and slide to the 24. The 27-14, Seminoles, it's now the fourth quarter. They've had some rain in Gainesville. And Penn State scoring recently. 
but they still trail by 13 fourth quarter at East Lansing for the latest scores of just the games you want call our Jefferson Pilot score line 1 900 267 57 57 calls are a dollar a minute and you youngsters get your parents permission first down Colquitt out to Faulkner on the run he caught it he's down to the 14 pretty nice throw Love catching that receiver in stride. Right now, two catches away from Carl Pickens. Blocker out in front of him, Billy Williams. Another first down for Tennessee. And the officials stop the clock while they correct the spot. Ball is at the 14-yard line. Volunteers back to work for 10, third quarter. Real quick, similar pass, other side. Craig Faulkner, first down. Excuse me, they already had the first down, but he gets a couple of yards beyond that marker. And he's down to the 11. And uh, he'll get the record if they keep throwing little patterns like that. Well, you got to credit Philip Fulmer and his staff for having a an awareness I mean here's a young man and it's been documented a lot this season wasn't going to play because of the wrist injury after the motorcycle accident but worked himself back to health and has had a very fine senior year you want you want to reward a young man for perseverance a lot of hard work one second and seven Stewart escapes and it's a touchdown James Manley had him James Manley lost him. James Stewart scored. <laughs> Eleven yard touchdown run for James Stewart. And you're right, Manley and Young and company kind of knocked each other off of James Stewart. And he said thank you and put it in the end zone. Oh, yeah. Bexford with another one. It's 48-0 Tennessee with 3.49 to go in the third quarter. James Little Man Stewart scoring for the second time today and his eighth touchdown of the year. You know, this season, we've honored one student athlete from each of the 12 SEC schools as the nationwide SEC Scholar Athlete of the Week. Today, we'd like to recap the honorees from this season. Congrats to Eric Zire, the outstanding quarterback, Alan Young of this Vanderbilt team, Alabama tennis star Cecil Brandon, Mike Blanchard of the LSU football squad, Juan Long from the Bulldogs of MSU, track and field performer Lars Sumper from Tennessee, David Harris from Ole Miss. Vanderbilt sideline for the Commodores, but you know, the, the main thing about coming to college and playing football is to get your degree. And Alan Young, the fine senior defensive end of the Vanderbilt Commodores, I guess he exemplifies that. Not only will he have his undergraduate degree before he leaves Vanderbilt, he is set to get his master's degree in December. So, again, Alan Young truly exemplifies the scholar-athlete and what this is all about. A lot of those examples on this Vanderbilt team. You have to be an outstanding student just to walk onto the campus and to put a football uniform on. Jackson on the return. And he's out to the 22, maybe the 22 and a half. Vanderbilt player. Well, Jack, I think a lot of people would agree with what you said earlier, that Tennessee may be the best football team right now in the SEC. Alabama's struggling a bit, and Jay Parker is hurt. Florida on the short end of a Florida State lead today, and having to come from behind to win the last couple of weeks, but this Tennessee team totally dominant over the last five or six weeks. But, and again, you could, uh, as I said earlier, you could just sense with Philip Fulmer yesterday at, at their workout that, you know, he said, hey, it was our fault. We didn't beat Alabama. We didn't beat Florida. And they should have beaten and, Alabama. And it's frustrating, but that's, that's the way it goes, and you wish you had another chance, but you don't. Well said, Bob, and well honored here at the University of Tennessee. He was on a lot of folks' minds during that 1992 season. A season that produced a 9-3 record. 
and a Hall of Fame bowl victory over Boston College. Jason Tomacek of Vandy on that last reception. Clock runs with 3.12 to go, third quarter. Six yards on that play, second and four. Jackson just beyond the marker, but mascots will do anything to get on camera. And incomplete on the far sideline. As they've had, that's really denied you a chance to, to know what to expect out of this offense. And the pitch to Cliff Deeves. Taken down by Shane Begno. Florida Bama. Whoever loses the championship game could end up in the Gator. That's where Florida played last year. After losing to Alabama in Birmingham, there are two other bowl spots unbeaten. On first down, overthrown. Kenny Simon, the intended receiver, block kicks. Three fumbles caused, two recovered. Here's Gordon with a little inside look to Tony Jackson. He's got good yardage up the far sideline and at the 29-yard line, caught from behind. They want to shut out. Tennessee got the shutout at Kentucky last week while Vanderbilt was being shut out at Florida. Side as well. I think Antonio Langham might be the best defensive player in the country. Great penetration there by Tennessee. James Wilson, the first man there. Shane Bonham finished off the play, 72 and 92, respectively. See a few of those starting defensive linemen still in the ball game for Tennessee because it's important. They do want to toss the shutout. That'd be a great way to go out. They're all seniors up front. Wilson, Bonham, Yankowski, and Morris. And that's a defensive line that lost three starters from last year, including all SEC Todd Kelly. Looks like a screen. They set it up nicely. And down inside the 25-yard line goes, how about that? First time they've been over 100 yards this year. He had 96, or at least Vandy did, against Georgia early. Kenny Simon was still the quarterback. Eric Willem in motion. Cliff Dees angles off right tackle. And he's down to the 13, where John Emery stopped it. Looks like we'll head for the other end and play the final 15 minutes. After three in Knoxville, the Volunteers of Tennessee cruising home with a 48-0 lead. 400 yards total offense per game, 476, what they normally rack up. Vanderbilt's top two rushers today. Jackson, 10 yards, Dees with three. 48-0. Fourth quarter, first play. Second down and five at the 13 of the box. Commodore stack the eye, and Ronnie Gordon has a first down. He's inside the five. Shutout spring that is over seven quarters long. Twelfth play of this ball control play. Option left. Gordon keeps, and he is into the end zone. Ronnie Gordon with his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. And Vanderbilt finally scores 34 seconds into the fourth quarter. Now that, that helps soothe the frustration a little bit. Stop Raymond Austin and cut inside of him. Steve Yetter for the extra point off the hold of Jeff Brothers. The snap of Richard Sines. It's 48-7 Volunteers. Ronnie Gordon, option left. His option was keep it and head for the end zone. And here in Knoxville with 14.26 to go, Vanderbilt is on the scoreboard. And it's 48-7. Bob Carpenter, Jack Corrigan, and Bob Kessling. Our SEC finale for 93. Billy Williams and Nilo Sylvan back to return the kick. It's kind of like, oh yeah, who are the kickoff return guys for the Volunteers? And that one squirts into the end zone. 
and the balls will start at their own 20. Things are getting interesting. Florida had just made a 27 ball game and they've scored three times in the fourth quarter as they try and get to the Citrus Bowl. And the Bulldogs looking for revenge over the Rebels who stopped them in Oxford last year. They play this year in Starkville. Big Ten looks like the whack today. And there's our number for the latest. SC has just allowed its first touchdown in seven quarters. And only the second since the Alabama game. Rose Phillips, the ball carrier, off the left side. There you go. Isn't that a great sign? <laughs> I think half of it got uh, blown away because after a stay, it said, please, with an exclamation point. I mean, they, they want to have heat return for another season and I'll tell you what what a what a great publicity campaign by Bud Ford and Haywood Harris the you have to be 21 to win the Heisman for number 21 Heath Schuler. I love that that was very clever a couple of guys have been at it for a long time around here and Shelton Quarles goes right after the quarterback been in a major college football program Down 19. Rose Phillips not very far on that draw play. James Manley was riding him down. Stay in Tennessee another year. By the way, number 81 there was uh, Benji. Standing right by his older brother. Walton has it picked off. This one intercepted. And it is Dereal Finklin who picks it up. Bill's going to have a pretty good memory. At the 33, the Commodores have the football back. 11.45 to go in the game. Johnny Gordon on an end around to Kenny Simon. He's got some blockers. And a pretty good play to stop him by John Emery. First down at the 14. And it is Cliff He scoring on the right side. And that'll be his second rushing touchdown of the year. And the Commodore. Steve Yenner will kick it away. Taken at the seven by Billy Williams. He's got some breakaway speed. He is through the middle, spun around, and down at the 47. This guy is dangerous every time he touches the ball. A 41-yard return. Dario Finkland ended it with the tackle. Well, it's been documented before. The area kid with the opportunity to come back after some work in junior college, and he is definitely exciting to watch he has that acceleration you just can't coach has been timed in the 40 at 4-3 played some juco ball at northeast oklahoma won a national championship there last year that program has sent a lot of players to the sec and over to the left side that one is close to a first down for nilo sylvan Ninth reception of the year. Nilo is a sophomore from Covington, Louisiana. A UT track star. He's a blazer, too. You put him on one side and Billy Williams on the other side next year. You got one guy running a 4340 and another who runs a 10.700 meters. That was last year. Probably running faster this year. You better have some quick DBs to cover these guys. First down at the 43 of Vanderbilt. Goldquist handing it off to James Stewart, and he'll get about seven or eight on first down. Well, they're in the final 16 seconds in Gainesville. Looks like the Seminoles are in line to head for the Orange Bowl and take on Nebraska. Be some people uh, in West Virginia not real happy, though, because the Mountaineers feel like uh, they're unbeaten and should get the shot. Strength of schedule means a lot yes, in these does. situations. That's why a lot of people haven't been too crazy about the Huskers. Second down and two. Stewart, right tackle. He's got a first down. Down to the one yard line. And we talked before, Bob, about whether or not he's sure wants to stay or turn pro after this season. When you look at this Tennessee offense in terms of the people coming back, 
That entire offensive line will be back. This guy carrying the football, James Stewart, is going to be back in the tailback spot next year. Mose Phillips, the fullback, will return. The young, speedy wide receivers we talked about. Certainly incentive for Pete Schuler to come back and maybe be part of a team in the run for the national championship as well as the high school. Boy, whoever quarterbacks this team is going to have a lot of weapons. Here's Stewart. Breaking tackles down to the seventh. John DeWitt, the left end, kept trailing him and trailing him and finally made the stop after 14 yards. That package you love to have at tailback, size and speed. The quickness to get into the hole, the size to just take Aaron Smith and bang right off of him and get about six or seven more. Florida State goes 11 and one. Florida falls to nine and two. With that result at Gainesville today. Four quit for Stewart, cuts up, and he scores! His third of the day. And Tennessee is into the 50s with 9.07 to go. For these volunteer fans who have sat out in the damp and cold for the better part of four hours, they want as many points as they can get. I like this kid. He's going to be a, a very fine football player in his final year here. And he's a good football player already. Not to take anything away from Charlie Garner and the things he's done this year, but the balls aren't going to stick to beat a tailback. 55, 14, 96 yards and 11 plays for Stewart. Oh, and Tennessee has put the ball into the end zone again. James Stewart has put the ball into the end zone for the third time today. And it's 55-14. Tony Jackson, the deep man, for another John Bexford kickoff. Back about the three. Jackson will angle near side and try to get outside and does. And he'll have some pretty good yardage out to around the 30. You know, there are two actual head coaches on the Vanderbilt sideline. One, Jerry DiNardo, the head football coach, and Jim Foster, who is the head coach in Bowling Green. In fact, they'll play Tennessee twice this coming year. Boy, those would be some great games, won't they? So a little site survey here by the uh, basketball operating under pressure by following Jerry DiNardo about five miles or so every Saturday. Up and down the sideline. Second down play. Pretty good opener out over the 35. Eric Lewis on the carry. For the fourth time this year, they did do Louisiana Tech, Duke, South Carolina, and now Vandy. Better than 42 points a game, a new school record. And they had to go a ways back to find such a productive team. Yeah, really. That's 79 years ago. Third down and four. Gordon wobbles one ahead. Tomacek dropped it. It's ruled incomplete. Murray Noel was hoping to add to that scoring total had it been a fumble. Tomacek, who has made a couple of receptions today, the true freshman out of Nashville couldn't hang out of that one and it would have been very close to a first down had he been able to secure it. Eight minutes to go. Bill Marin Angel will kick again. Billy Williams inside his own 30. And he'll take the fair catch. Knee down near the 34. 31 yards on the kick. Billy Williams taking the Punts as well now because uh, Sean Summers, who got the scoring going way back when with a punt return, uh, twisted an ankle and is not playing uh, the rest of the way. And the third string quarterback gets a shot here. Tennessee baseball player, 6 1 sophomore Todd Helton. He's out of Central High School right here in Knoxville. Give it off there to Eric Lane. He's 
a redshirt freshman who backs up Moe Phillips and Mario Brunson at fullback. Limit lane to a, a couple of yards. Second down and eight. End around. That's given to Nilo Silva who breaks a tackle. And he gets loose. He's across midfield to the near side. And a chance to break it. He will score. Wow. A 64-yard touchdown play. It looked like Gerald Collins had him at the line of scrimmage. I had him in the backfield even for a loss of a couple of yards, Bob, but. Once he got into the open with that sprinter speed, the end around, and there's Collins who had the shot. Silva knocked him away, and now watch the maneuverability, picking his way through traffic and then accelerating. Got some good blocks downfield. Joey Kent with a block there. Picked up another block late downfield from Kendrick Jones and scores the touchdown. 62 to 14 with 6.56 to go. Nilo Silvan showing us some of that track speed. Boy, he did a great job of making a good tackler, Gerald Collins, miss. And now once you get a guy with this kind of elusiveness and speed into the open field, watch out. Good effort there by Joey Kent. And now Silvan breaks through another tackle and just outruns everybody else. Drill for that young man, the sophomore out of Covington, Louisiana. And on the heels of that replay, I want to say thanks and congratulations for some just brilliant camera work and replay work here today by our Jefferson Pilot Sports production crew. They've been outstanding for two years, and we have seen some gorgeous replays. That's certainly one of those today on a pretty nice-looking run as well. two push-ups for all the points after that. <laughs> well, let's wave the flag instead. 62 to 14. Two fingers ending up looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger after a game like this. <laughs> Either that or carried off. Or Hans and Franz, let's pump you up, right? Well, they've got the scoring pumped up. 62. Dexford's kick. Tony Jackson just inside his goal line. Make it over the 20. Cut inside, and he's out to the 35-yard line with a nice return. E. Schumer loves it when the other guys get some glory offensively. Jerry Colquitt sharing in the fun. He says, all right, little brother. I'll tell you what, he is such a great leader. I mean, you, you talk about quarterbacks handling that role on and off the field, but I mean, when you talk to Tennessee people or read about some of the things, he's, he's almost too good to be true. Ronnie Gordon calls a timeout with 6.45 to go. Vanderbilt using its second. We'll take one right with Gordon and Donardo and return to Knoxville in a moment. Volunteers will win their 11th straight over their intrastate rivals. Ronnie Gordon with Garrett Willem in motion. And he is sacked. That collapsed on him in a hurry. Quincy Prickmore, one of the first guys in there. Steve White from right in. And you'll see more of Steve White in the seasons to come. A lot of seniors graduating. Wilson Bottom, Yatkowski, Morris. There's White out of Westwood High School in Memphis. He plays next to Leland Taylor, who's made some fine plays here today. Loss of seven, second and 17. Gordon hit as he threw. Incomplete. Leland Taylor. 
I heard you talking about him. Said, I better make another play there. Not giving me enough credit. He's made a few. Bob Kessling, what's happening downstairs? Well, you know, you talk about Heath Schuler a moment ago. Heath went over the mountain for Thanksgiving back to Bryson City. I said, you got to have a big Thanksgiving day? He said, yeah, we're going to have bear and wild boar. I said, what about turkey? He said, well, on Thanksgiving, we're not much for domestic animals in the Schuler household. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Sucked a couple of Commodores today. And Gordon back on third down. He felt the touch, escaped it, and then throws in complete. He was looking for Sanford Ware. First time they've gone for Sanford, a former starter today. Good pressure by the Volunteers. Now that young defensive line, the guys you're just talking about, White and Taylor and Stone and Burton, they're all sophomores and freshmen for the most part so this team is loaded and Bill Merritt Angel will load up again he's been a busy man the last two Saturdays end over end he gets a sideways hop and the Commodores will down it at the Tennessee 37 with 538 to go 35 yards on the kick well, one thing about this final score here and really the final stretch of the season, we were talking about where Tennessee may go for a bowl game and who their opponent might be. I'll tell you what, there's probably a little, uh, more than a few teams out there who might think twice about drawing the spot against Tennessee. They've only scored 210 points in their last four games. There's an escape. Jay Graham outside and over midfield. Graham's a true freshman out of Canopolis, North Carolina. A third straight tailback. And he just had his longest run of the year, 18 yards. He's another one of those speed guys, a 4-4-40 man at 6.39 in the 60 meters. Most points in over 30 years for the Tennessee offense today. Todd Helton giving it to the same man, Graham. Volunteers keeping it on the ground. And the clock approaching five minutes to go. The only problem in a game like this for the kids out there now, they're, they're thrilled to have a chance to play and get some game experience at the major college level but when you're a wide receiver at the end of a game like this nope. you're a wide tackle That's because right. you're not going to get any work on catching the ball you just work on your downfield stock blocking second down and nine Todd Helton left hander across the middle and he's got the completion that's number 81 Benji Schuler. that's his ninth reception of the year the freshman of Bryson City over the mountain as Kessling said I guess the bear and boar must have settled pretty well well David Cutcliffe says I got to give these kids at least a couple three throws out there and so Mr. Helton makes the completion to the junior member of the Schuler firm to another one. The brothers. Yep, brothers back there in the secondary with the tackle. Shelton Quarles in on it as well. And looks like Shelton Quarles is racking himself up another double-digit tackle there. So what, there have been more than a few first downs put up in the stat book by this Tennessee offense as well. 345 on the clock. For Graham. Everybody on the Teller Tennessee sideline hollers stay in bounds. Byron DeGroffin Reed on the stop. One of those twins out of Dunwoody, Georgia. Allen is the other. There is Byron. 6'6, 257. His brother's a bit smaller, 6'5, 253. Both of these guys played only one year of high school football. dog and B-dog, they call it. Down to three minutes, second down and 11. And 
Graham, taken down again by De Groffenry. An interesting offseason for the Vanderbilt Commodores. They have some holes to fill and want to continue their development. He's a little disappointed that the offense didn't come together as well as they thought it might here in 93. Two and a half minutes to go. Third down and eight. And flags fly. Bob Kessling. Bob, there are policemen out lining the field. Usually there's security here on the field, but today is a little bit special. They're going to make sure nobody jumps on this field with an exacto knife or any kind of knife to cut off the turf because remember as soon as the game is over they're going to secure the stadium and then start ripping up the turf and then they'll put it on sale for Tennessee fans a little souvenir of the last artificial turf in Neyland Stadium history. It's a few, I thought all of those guys were down there for, to protect Bob Kessling from these rabid Knoxville fans. He is so huge here among those folks. Third down at 13. Graham the carry down to the 20. And Shelton Quarles with another tackle. Jeff Brothers help rip off the ball carrier. And it'll be fourth down, under two minutes to go. Elton looks over to the sidelines and he's going to get the play. They're not going to line up and try a field goal. They will go for it on fourth down. With all the fans you see in the stands here, Bob, are just they could be doing anything out there because it's Tennessee. They're going to watch it. That's right. Elton with a drop. He will throw the screen, and Graham dropped it. And he had first down room in front of him as Vanderbilt was coming on the blitz, and the ball will turn over with a minute 24 to go. Tennessee. Well, we look back on this 93 season. It started out in the sizzling heat of Labor Day weekend with a South Carolina upset at Georgia. We've seen some wild ones this year. Cedric Douglas, by the way, is in to play quarterback for Vanderbilt. We saw LSU upset Alabama in Tuscaloosa. And we've seen some dominant performances by Florida, Tennessee, most notably this year. And we've seen a resurgent Kentucky program in the SEC appearing to get better and better all the time. And maybe LSU can sneak into a bowl game today with a victory over Arkansas. And don't forget about those Razorbacks. Mike Royals will get them going with Danny Ford. And we're down to the final 40 seconds. Is our guy again, Leland Taylor, with another stop. Hey, Jack, it's been great having you with us. Thanks for coming over from the ACC side and sitting in with us for the final game of the year here in the Southeastern Conference. Well, I enjoyed it. I was very impressed. It seen uh, some of the Tennessee action this year, heard a lot about them, and uh, they certainly lived up to their billing. Third down at six. Douglas flushed out and cracked down over the 30. He's got a first down, and... It'll be the final Vanderbilt first down of the season as Tennessee wins it 62-14. Philip Fulmer goes 9-1-1 in his first full season as Tennessee head coach. And we're back to Knoxville after this from your local SEC station. season is over so are Tennessee's and Vanderbilt's uh, nine one and one high the volunteers finish at and Vanderbilt with a tough loss to their intrastate rivals their win over 62 14 could very well play Penn State. all right we keep rolling along Tennessee and Vanderbilt in college football a big victory for Tennessee 62 to 14 over Vanderbilt 
Well, we'll continue checking the Citrus Bowl. They could find Tennessee there. The Citrus Bowl has an opportunity to take the Volunteers. The Volunteers' last regular season game against Vandy. They're going to rip up that turf. The first collegiate game was played on that turf in 1968 between Tennessee and Georgia. They're going back to the grass. Boy, I'll tell you, turf, grass, doesn't matter what the surface was. Tennessee's just played so well. Sean Summers faked the reverse, and then he takes it in. 51 yards, 7 old balls. Boy, they have just been pouring it on people of late. Heath Schuler, will he be leaving? Is this his last home game? Well, they hope it's not down in Knoxville. Great pass to Joey Kent. 47-yard score. Final thought, uh, final score there, 62-14 as Vandy ends its season, 4-7. and seven. Look for Tennessee to take on Penn State in that Citrus Bowl. Do the polls change after everything that's happened? Today, Vanderbilt and Tennessee, the Volunteers playing extremely good football in November as they have for the last seven or eight years. The schedule gets a little softer at that point. Vanderbilt today completely overmatched. The scoreless game in the first quarter, Sean Summers feels it. It's the fake reverse. They don't get a glove on it. 51 yards for the touchdown. 7 nothing. It would get uglier and uglier for Donardo's team. Heath Schuler, strong in the late season. Over the middle here, Craig Faulkner tips it, but stays with it. And the very next play, James Stewart busted in the end zone from seven yards out. You get the point here. The Volunteers are up 17-0. Then Schuler shows his arm strength. The scouts think of that. On the comeback, Joey Kent takes it in from 47 yards out. The balls win at 16. Tier State. Tennessee making Bandy bite on the punt return. The fake reverse, and John Summers is gone. After a sluggish start, that 51-yard uh, return. A 47-yard score. Everything but throw a touchdown to his brother, Benji. Tennessee, a big win, setting a school record for the season with 62 touchdowns. Charlie Garner, buck 51 on the ground. And Scott. Oh, I give him a lot of credit, uh, and uh, I, I appreciate just him being there for me. And and, uh, and he doesn't necessarily come tell me stuff. I, I, kind of our rule was talk football. I had to come and ask him, and that was our rule because he never pressured me or put any uh, pushed me in any way. So, but uh, he was there for me, and I asked him a lot of questions, and I learned a lot from him, and uh, I love him every bit for it. Volunteer fans have read a lot about you. They've heard a lot about you, but obviously they know what stock you're from. But uh, they don't. They've really never had a chance to meet you. Right. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting all the Tennessee fans. Obviously, I've, I've heard how, how, how much they, um, they get into the football games and the team. And uh, obviously, I'm looking forward to, get, to becoming part of the tradition here. What kind of a person is Peyton Manning? Peyton's a humble person. He, uh, he likes to have fun with his friends, but he's laid back. Uh, he uh, might get a little homesick from his family, but uh, just uh, and, uh, he's a team player and likes to be a leader. Just uh, wants to have a good career here in Tennessee. Of course, we talked to all the quarterbacks, Todd Helton, Jerry Colquitt, and the new one, Brandon Stewart, as well. And coming up in the next week or so, we're going to have previews of the Volunteers as we count down towards the start of the season, Laura. And football very much on everyone's mind, since obviously, at least Major League Baseball isn't uh, going to be after tomorrow. Absolutely, and that's what we are going to go <laughs> right into now, and we will have...